So let's do an example using the first order integrated rate law equation. So I'll give you an example here, but you want to take a second and understand how do I know that I need to use the integrated rate law equation. When I look at this question, you know, it will talk about changes in concentration versus time, and it's very easy to get confused with the average rate law type question that we discussed earlier. But I know this is going to involve some type of integrated rate law because I have given you information about K for the reaction that is given. And K only shows up in these integrated rate law equations. It does not show up in the average rate law calculations that we did earlier. So I give you a generic reaction here. And the other thing I want to make sure is I want to make sure I need to use the first order and not the second order. So I need to know what, what is the overall order of the reaction. And remember, I can't get that from the reaction equation. So a lot of times in exams, the test writer will literally just say for the first order reaction or something like that. So I need to either tell you or give you information to determine that. And I've kind of done that here. So I gave you the rate law expression for this reaction. And in this case, the exponent is implied one here. And so that tells me that this reaction is first order. Also, I've given you K. The units on K are one over se seconds, and that is the unit on K for first order reactions. So when I look at this, don't try to overcomplicate this type of question. Really, there's just four variables in here. And as a test writer, unless I want to try to make it more complicated, really all I can do is give you three of the four variables and have you cal calculate the fourth. So here, what we're looking for is time. I'm giving you the initial final concentration. I've given you K. And then we're just saying, how long is it going to take to go from that initial to final concentration? So, you, so two places I see students make mistakes quite a bit is you got to make sure you get the right concentration in the right place. Um, if you get these reversed, your answer is going to be a mile off. And the other place is the algebra for this. So I see quite commonly where students will, will set up the problem correctly kind of like what I've done here, and then their end answer, end answer will not be correct. So make sure you understand how to uh, solve this algebraically and how to do a natural log and an inverse natural log on your calculator. And I'll kind of remind you that in just a second. So here I set it up. I like starting with the equation, plugging all my values in. So the initial concentration here, final concentration here, um, put my K value in, we're solving for T. So what I do is I go ahead and I do this division and I take the natural log of it. So there should be a button on your calculator that says natural log. And remember, natural log is just a function. So it turns one number into another number. So you take this division, you hit natural log. What comes out is negative 1.6. And that's going to be equal to negative my value for k originally up here times t. And we want to solve for t. So I take this negative 1.6 divided by negative my k value, 2.05 times 10 to the minus fourth. I do the calculation. I get 7.8 times 10 to the third. And then, as always, you want to take a second and say, what are my units on this? So the units on time are inside of k. So the units on k determine the units on time. And the units on time are seconds. So I know my units here are going to be in seconds.